right, we have, along with our regulars, Harvey Corman and Lyle Wagoner and Vicki Lawrence, our very special guest star this evening is Miss Gloria Swanson. <laughs> so before we get started, let's turn up the lights, see if you all have anything you want to say or ask or talk about. Or... Yes, the gentleman in the front row. Is it true that while you were film filming Pete and Tilly that some mysterious guy dumped your trailer and bruised the ribs of your wardrobe lady? Yes, that's absolutely true. <laughs> Don't you feel like a fool? <laughs> <laughs> this was one of the gentlemen who worked on a film I did called Pete and Tilly, and he grabbed my wardrobe lady. Of course, she was happy about it, since she saw what he looks like. And, but uh, the wardrobe lady is very tiny and petite, and he cracked her ribs. <laughs> I mean, but it was a love hug, if you know what I mean. Yes. I always aim to see you in person. Now I have a chance to see how beautiful you are. Oh, you can come back anytime. <laughs> hey, hello. How are you? When am I going to be on television? You watch all the time and I'm not on? <laughs> Try Channel 2. <laughs> We're going, this coming Saturday, we, we come back. Oh, God willing, I hope so. Oh, listen, I have to um, uh, tell you, we're really excited tonight about having uh, Miss Swanson on this show. We, um, uh, a couple of years ago, I started doing a takeoff on her performance as Norma Desmond in the marvelous movie, Sunset Boulevard. And um, so uh, we got Miss Swanson to come on the show because she wrote me a letter and said she'd gotten a kick out of it. So we have her here tonight. But first, I would like to show you uh, I do an entrance down a staircase, uh, you know, when, and Harvey's there. And uh, if the folks in the audience here will watch their monitors, you'll see what we did when... Uh, Great star at Oh, and that's Stevie Lawrence. Is Nora Desmond. Wow, it is you. Oh, Miss Desmond, I've been such a fan of yours for such a long time. Say, how come you never made it in talking pictures? I don't know. <laughs> that was right, the first chance we did. And uh, now I'd like you to watch your monitors, and there's a clip of uh, the real, real lady, Miss Swanson, in the final scene of Sunset Boulevard. Act! <laughs> I can't go on with the scene. I'm too happy. Mr. DeMille, do you mind if I say a few words? Thank you. You see, this is my life. It always will be. There's nothing else. Just us. And the cameras. And those wonderful people out there in the dark. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. feel at home this week. Oh, well, it's been our pleasure, Miss Swanson, really. Uh, I've been on other shows, and they sent flowers back to my dressing room, but you've really outdone yourself. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I guess I'll be running along now. Oh, no, no. Uh, uh, don't go. You don't mind if he stays, no, do you? No, I can stay. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, and oh. he's something to hang on to. <laughs> He's really something to hang on to. <laughs> I, uh, Ms. Swanson, now that you're here, there's something I've been dying to ask you all week. Have you I've ever... I've never, never, never seen a physique like that. <laughs> well, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, Lyle recently posed for a centerfold in Playgirl magazine. Oh, how lovely. Do you have any extra copies around? Why, of course. The 8 by 10s are $2.50, the wallet size are only a dollar, and the t-shirts are a bargain at $4.95. Lyle, uh, why don't you go backstage and touch up your teeth? 
<laughs> if you'll excuse me, Miss Watson. Oh, no, of course not. Um, you know, uh, I want you to know that I watch this show every week. Oh, thank you. And I think you do an outstanding job doing all those different characters. You do so well. Really, it's marvelous. Well, thank, thank you. you. That's really quite a compliment coming from such a talented star. Uh, <clears throat> do you fool around? <laughs> Does anybody have a question for Miss Swanson? Uh, why, yes, I do. What? Well, I know I have no business asking this, Miss Swanson, but uh, would you have dinner with me after the show tonight? Uh, Oh, I'd love to. Really? Well, where would you like to go? Algiers. <laughs> he can't go there, Miss Swanson. He's on our show every week. He's a regular. A regular? Uh -huh. Oh, forget it. I wanted a weirdo. <laughs> Harvey! <laughs> Max! Max! Don't go away. We'll be right back. Television City in Hollywood. It's the Carol Burnett Show with Harvey Corman. Vicki Lawrence and Lyle Wagoner. translated, I suppose that means, hi, honey, I'm home. No, it means I want to know why you invited that lovesick elevator operator, operator over here for dinner tonight. Oh, I guess he mentioned it to you, huh? He mentioned it to everybody for 31 floors. That's all he could talk about. I don't understand you, Carol. You mean, you, you know the kid has a crush on you. Why do you encourage him? I am not encouraging him, Roger. In fact, this dinner tonight should do just the opposite. Oh, I get it. You're going to serve him your meatloaf. <laughs> Yes, I am. Good idea. I'd like to stick my foot in his mouth, but your meatloaf will do a lot more damage. Wait a minute. When we were first married, you wanted meatloaf five nights a week. When we were first married, there's a lot of things I wanted five nights a week. <laughs> well, that wasn't funny, Roger. You're telling me. <laughs> Forget about the meatloaf. I just want to know what's your plan on how you're going to discourage lover boy. It's really very simple. Well, then why don't you tell me? I plan to discourage him by showing him how much we love each other. That's ridiculous. He's no fool. He'll see right through us. Oh, oh uh, let me put that another oh, way. Oh, never mind. I know what you mean. It's, it's just that I think if we show him how much we really mean to one another, he'll get over this silly schoolboy crush he has on me. You really think so? I know so, Roger. I, I know men. <sighs> I almost married one. <laughs> Oh, there he is. All now, right, come let's on. Now, try let's, it. Let's, okay. One of these? Yeah. Okay. Come in. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought the door was locked. I can't find my key. Oh, sorry. Wrong apartment. <laughs> hey, it's you guys. What's going on? I know what's going on. I'm kissing my wife. Anything wrong with that? No, it's great. When'd you teach him, Carol? <laughs> Chrissy, would you do me a favor? Why don't you figure out a way to make your sister an only child? I'd rather make her a widow. <laughs> oh, there he is. Come on, let's give it one of these. Okay. Come in! <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Bradford. I brought you some flowers. I'll put them in the vase for you. Gee, the table looks terrific. It was real nice of you to invite me to dinner. I'm sorry I didn't have time to change out of my uniform, but I didn't want to be late for our first date. <laughs> oh. Uh, hello, Jim. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't hear you come in. Uh, you, you remember my husband, Roger? <laughs> Hi, guy. Afraid the missus and I got a little carried away. Well, that's the way it is when two people in love don't see each other all day. Oh, I know. 
Uh, I suppose we all have a little drinky poo, huh? Yeah. Uh, what do you like, darling? Uh, the usual, sweetheart. The usual? Uh -huh. uh, white wine on the rocks. How'd you know? Oh, you'd be surprised what you hear in an elevator. I even know what size dress you wear. Well, big deal. So do I. She wears a size nine. Eight. Nine? Eight? Carol? Uh, I'm afraid my husband's right, Jimmy. I, I wear a nine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now that that's uh, settled, uh, what would you like to drink? Oh, I'll have white wine on the rocks, too. I was a fool to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Bradford, mm -hmm. your hair looks lovely tonight. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Jim, why don't you, um, I, I tell you what, I'll go in and help my wonderful husband with the drinks, and, and you sit over there on the couch and make yourself comfortable. Way over there? Well, we'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't think my idea is working out too well. Mm. Wave, what? wave, wave to him, Roger. What? Be nice. Wave. Hello. All right, no more, Mr. Nice Guy. Get out the meatloaf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we are. Here are our drinks. You, Jim. Thank you. Hey, Hello. darling. Thank you. I'd like to propose a toast to the most wonderful husband in this whole wide world. And to the 12 happiest years of my life being married to you, darling. You know, this is wonderful. Yes. Is this imported or domestic? <laughs> that does it! Carol, go talk to your sister. Me and Loverboy have a few things to straighten out. Roger. Move! <laughs> now, you and I are gonna have a little man-to-man -man talk. What about? Our wife. Oh, great. <laughs> First of all, you might as well admit it. You have a crush on her, right? Oh, I don't have a crush on her. You don't? No, I'm way beyond the crush stage. I'm in love with her. <laughs> but you can't be in love with her. She's my wife. Besides, she needs someone closer to her own age. See, even you realize it. <laughs> <laughs> We're not that far apart in age. Really? Gee, you see, I wanted to introduce you to my mother. She's a widow, and she has a big thing for men with receding hairlines. <laughs> Look, let's not get off the track, okay? Now, just let me get this straight. You're in love with my wife, right? Head over heels. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? There's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's bigger than both of us. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm telling you to forget all about Carol. Go fall in love with some other pretty blue-eyed girl. Her, her eyes aren't blue, they're hazel. They're blue, but that's besides the point. Her I'm eyes are hazel. I've been married to her for 12 years. Don't tell me what color her eyes are. They're blue. Hazel. Carol! <laughs> come out here for a minute. <laughs> now look, Jimbo, there's, there's any number of girls you could fall in love with. Oh, what time is dinner? I'm starving. Look. Look at, here's Chrissy. Look at this magnificent girl, this wonderful figure, great sense of humor, and she's single. Why don't you fall in love and marry her? Why drag me into this? Who else would marry a tall, skinny, funny-looking idiot with no ambition or brains in his head? My sister did. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion, Mr. Bradford, but I think I'll stick with your wife. Nothing personal. Oh, I give up. Why don't you and Chrissy talk to him? I need another drink. Stick with me. Sit down, huh? huh? Right here, Jim. Now, um, <clears throat> Jim. Uh, Mrs. Bradford, mm -hmm. that perfume you're wearing is out of this world. <laughs> Thank you. Jim. Carol. Jim, <laughs> Carol would like to talk to you. Oh, great. <laughs> but Jim, see, first of all, what you're doing is all wrong. I know, it's a bad habit I picked up when I was a kid. No, that's no, not what I'm Jim, about. what Carol is trying to say is that you've got to get over this silly crush you've got on her. Why? Oh, well, Jim, listen to me. It's just wrong, that's all. Now, you're a nice young man, and, and I really don't want to hurt your feelings for anything in this world, but I'm a married woman. You're darn right. For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. Got it? Yeah, I got it. Mm. I got it. Okay, I've heard enough. Now I have something to say. 
You people are acting like being in love is, is some sort of crime or something, when actually it's the highest compliment one human being can pay to another. So I'm in love with your wife. Big deal. I mean, big deal. I mean, I'm not trying to break up your marriage or anything. I mean, I'm not sneaking around behind your back. I'm just an honest man trying, trying to express an honest emotion, honestly. I thought you'd understand that, but I guess I was wrong. I'm sorry if, if I've offended anybody. I didn't mean to. I really didn't. Please excuse me. Well, nice going, Roger. I feel rotten. <laughs> Another man is in love with my wife, and I feel rotten. I'm gonna go catch him. Jim! Oh, Jim! Jim, come in, please. I'm so sorry. Please, say you'll stay for dinner. I'll stay. Oh, Thank good. you. Thank you very much. And then after dinner, we can go to a movie while they're doing the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Miss Gloria Swanson. I've been around, but I'm still here. I've seen fads and fashions swiftly come and go. I've been around, but listen, dear, there's not a lot that's new, that much I know. Take dances, for example. Rock and roll to old Fandango. I've danced them all, the best ones and the worst. They're making such a fuss about the last tango. <laughs> You're looking at the kid who danced the first. <laughs> I've got a new fango tango, and there's nothing to it. You just sort of stand there and just sort of do it. You cling close together, there's no wasted motion. A new fango tango, an old fashioned notion. The floor may be crowded, but that doesn't matter. It's not necessary to move. Don't move, why move? The floor may be crowded. That's all the better. It's just like romancing while dancing. Who's dancing? You can't get away from the one big attraction. Cause there's not much movement, but there's lots of action. So, so there's, there's nothing, nothing wrong with a waltz or fandango. But who, what can come from a new fango tango? Charleston, forget the fandango, cause you'll fall in love to a new fangle tango. Your feet won't get tangled. I tangled in a movie. Your nerves won't get jangled. Believe me, it's groovy. And you won't get mangled. You love it, love it, love it. This new fangle tango.
This is a mashie. You mean that tall, skinny thing molests women in the park? <laughs> That's a masher. This is a mashie. Uh -oh. It's a golf club. Sit down, Bert. I want to talk to you. Okay. Yes, you give me a little push, Molly. Thank you. Get mine started. Here we go. <laughs> Bert, Bert, you can't play in that golf tournament tomorrow. Why not, Molly? I'm a lot friskier than you think. I've got muscles I haven't used in years. Nobody knows that better than me. <laughs> golf is a great game for men my age, Molly. You get out there in the fresh air, you hit the ball 80 or 90 times, you have lunch, then uh, if you feel like it, you go out and play the second hole. <laughs> well, I just think it's plumb silly for a grown man to chase a little ball around a big old field. No, it is not. You, Molly, you know what? You need, you need to sport yourself to keep yourself occupied. Well, I've tried, Bert, but the milkman's married. <laughs> I can't wait to see myself tomorrow. Four. Bert? <laughs> What does four mean? Four? Mm -hmm. Oh, that means I'm yelling to the people 200 yards away to watch out. Well, save your breath. Ain't nobody in your club can hear that far. <laughs> well, you got me all mixed up, Molly. Uh, do you remember my starting time? Well, last one I recall was in the winter of 42. <laughs> You're not going to discourage me, Molly. I even polished up the old niblick. It was getting kind of rusty. Oh, and that's another reason you can't play tomorrow. Your old bag is cracked and dried. Nobody said you had to come. <laughs> Just that I feel like such a big kid. Why, I can still hit the ball farther than the eye can see. Bert, I can spit farther than your eye can see. Let's see. <laughs> Keep you quiet for a while. You can make fun of me all you want, Wally, but I'm not only going to play in that senior citizen's golf tournament, but I plan to take a trophy home. Well, that's a step over last year. Last year, you took an ambulance. <laughs> Well, not my fault. The other guy hit his golf ball, didn't holler for me to get out of the way. Ball hit me in the head and knocked me unconscious. What was I to do about that? You could move out of the way when somebody's about to putt. <laughs> well, it was just a freak accident. Well, it just shows that you old men shouldn't be out on the golf course. Where should we be? Home in bed? <laughs> hey, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Remind you of anything, Molly? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kerrigan, the mailman during the postal strike. <laughs> Why? He couldn't deliver either. <laughs> you certainly know how to take the wind out of my sails, Molly. Now, Bert, it's just that I don't want you coming home to me tomorrow with a bad back. Why not? Every time I come to you with a good back, you've got a headache. <laughs> you're mad at me. Darn right. You bug me sometimes, Molly. Just making fun of me because I'm getting on a bit in years. No, I'm not, Bert. Because every year you've had is a year we've had together. Thank you, Molly. An old man is queer in his ways. His appetite fails. But he's hungry for praise And the sights that he's seen Cloud the sights that he'll see Old isn't easy, easy to be. be He walks like he's smoothing out bumps in a rug <laughs> For hours he'll stare at a spot the hug that he gives you is hardly a hug. You remember the hug that it's not anymore. An old man 
He's sometimes afraid He sings to the sun But he's partial to shade He's a burdensome thing That a family ignores He's a put in a room And to lock all the doors Except No exceptions, my love Except Except when an old man is yours. And I'll always be
got married today. According to experts in human behavior, Masters and Johnson, Dr. Joyce Brothers, Dr. David Rubin, and Dear Abby, the American male cannot handle an extramarital affair with ease. And should he happen to have that once-in-a-lifetime affair, his guilt makes it impossible to keep the secret from his wife. My boss, Mr. Crane, you remember my crane, Mr. Boss? I've, I've been working for him for eight years now, and besides, he's your brother. And he said uh, he'd like for me to finish up the report, so I went back into the office and uh, finished up the report. There's no sense in checking uh, with him on it. He went out of town for the rest of the week. Oh, that's nice, darling. Darling, did you happen to drink the sherry last night? Questions! Questions about every little thing! I mean, I was an hour and 40 minutes late. What's the big deal about that? Here it is! <laughs> Would you believe it? I'm actually going to try to make a sherry cheesecake. <laughs> Ruthie, you're wonderful. Much too good for a wretch like me. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I can't bear it. Darling, have you seen the corkscrew lately? Again with the questions. Look, I don't have to put up with this. This incessant spying and prying. You haven't got a thing on me. Have you? Oh, there it is. It's right where I left it last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, so look, honey, I brought some things for you. Here's some flowers and some candy and a jigsaw puzzle. See? Oh. Great for evenings when you're sitting home alone, feeling neglected, suspecting me of heaven knows what. <laughs> Darling, that's so sweet of you, but you didn't have to do that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, sweetheart, why don't you go lie down and let me finish up all this? You seem a little tired. <laughs> well, of course I'm tired. I've got a very tiring job. I mean, I've always got something to do, a memo to write or, or phone calls to make, lots of work to do. I mean. There's dozens of innocent causes for my being tired. Oh, all right, dear. Then why don't I put these in water and you open up the wine? Okay. All right. Oh, you'll never guess who I ran into at the market today. Oh, no, say it isn't so. <laughs> Not Helen. Who's Helen? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ran into my cousin Agnes. Oh, we had such a lovely visit. She's invited us over tonight. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Well, my day was dull. Same old routine. I didn't vis visit anybody or anything like that. Do you buy that? Oh, darling, those flowers are absolutely lovely. Well, they're the best I could find, darling. Nothing but the best for you. It's the least I can do to make the... I'll get it. <laughs> Hello? I told you to call me. <laughs> oh, hello, Mother. Yeah, I didn't recognize your voice for a second. Sound like an old army buddy of mine. <laughs> yeah, 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 she's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, so Sunday as usual. Yeah, all right, goodbye, mother. <laughs> Chatterbox. Nag, nag, nag. <laughs> Darling, you really do seem a little bit tired. I tell you what, why don't I cancel our visit with Agnes this evening and we can stay home and watch television? Okay. There's a wonderful movie on tonight, a real sob story with Cary Grant and Deborah Carr, an affair to remember. <laughs> you think you're clever, don't you? I can't bear this cat and mouse game anymore. I want everything out in the open. Unless you don't suspect anything. <laughs> For sakes, the way you're talking, you'd think you were carrying on with another woman or something. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> Helen is so cheap. She's gaudy. She's sexy. I mean, she leers at me from behind her desk all day long. She's a Jezebel that's invaded the sanctity and patriotism of my home. Ruthie, can you ever forgive me? Darling, of course 
I can. Why, you only did what any normal, healthy male would do under the same circumstances. I mean, if a gorgeous, sexy, blonde lady comes up and throws herself right at your feet, how can I expect you to remember the sanctity of a silly little marriage vow? Ruthie, you're a saint. Oh. It'll never happen again. Well, I know it won't, sweetheart. Oh. Now, calm down, darling. <laughs> hey, sweetheart, taste this and see if it has enough cinnamon.
you'd been around when they said it all without a word without a sound the great things they could do with just a prop or two a keystone cop or two a damsel in distress oh yes they were inspired insane absurd and they said it all without a sound without a word oh i wish i'd been around when they said it all without a Remember how clean and sweet our air used to be? Well, we can make it that way again if we all do our share and clean up. We would like to thank Paramount Pictures for the use of the Sunset Boulevard clip and their latest picture for the whole family is Scalawag starring Kirk Douglas. And uh, be sure and be with us next week. <laughs> I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh or sing a song. We just get started And before you know it Comes a time We have to say So long Good night The Elevator Boy was played by Jim Connell Recorded before a live audience.